right, today is Thursday, August 6, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. We have a lot of topics to cover. We will change the order a little bit today. We will start by covering the closing of the market and the sector's performance. Then we're going to look at the futures. After that, we will do something new looking at the insider's activities. We have some in important new developments there then we will look at the options market after that we will look at the heat map then the headlines then we will look at the technical analysis of the charts there are very very important developments in the charts in case of the spy and the gap and of course i will answer the question where is the limit for apple i will give you a specific number where i think apple will reverse and i will do that by calculating the movement of the rsi versus the stock and after that we will look at the earnings review we had some important earnings we will review those earnings and finally we will of course preview the jobs report the big jobs report tomorrow and the implications it could have on the market so here we go let's start the indices what's new they closed again in the green the Dow Industrial Average up 185 points or 0.68%. The NASDAQ is the outperformer again up 109.67 points or a full 1%. And the S&P 500 closing up 21.4 points or 0.64%. The sector's performance today was an offensive day with the communication services, aka Facebook and Google, and technology, aka Apple and Microsoft, leading. The laggards were healthcare and energy. Now let's take a look at the futures market. Crude today took a little break. What about coffee? Coffee, I told you yesterday that coffee reversed and that was a short term stop, so you'd short coffee. And coffee is down today. Here is a chart of coffee identifying the next support level that I would buy coffee again at. Likewise, we talked about orange juice, and I said that the support of 115 is important for orange juice. And if you set your buy order at 115, yesterday you were down a little bit, but today, as expected, of course, orange juice rebounded, and we will see if the rebound will have any continuation in the days to come. Big day for metals again, gold up big, but silver even bigger, platinum, palladium up big. Of course, on the heels of the commitment of the Fed to increase inflation. Now, let's look at something new here, the insider's activity, because we have uh, Jeff Bezos, of course, dumping billions of dollars worth of shares, around three billion bucks worth of shares. Remember that Jeff Bezos dumped uh, another three to four billion bucks before earlier in the year. So his timing is pretty good. He dumps when the stock is at all times high. And of course, who knows if Amazon will have any scrutiny or of being broken down we will cover of course news about senator sanders attacking amazon and of course wanting to add a provisional tax on these companies that benefited and thrive during the pandemic and of course you can see from insiders activity here's mondelez i am an investor in mondelez the director here is selling a lot of shares about over 50 million or so so i don't like that but mondelez as you can see from the table as well sold their stake in keurig so that evens out the sell from the director. We have also selling activities here on Tesla. We have seen a lot of insider selling in Tesla, whether it's option exercises or selling of the stock. The executives are dumping a lot of shares, as of course Tesla rallied to all times high. And of course, uh, Hook of Avgo, Broadcom, dumping shares like there is no tomorrow. Dumping another round this week and the week before and of course we have the ceo of etsy dumping shares a few days ago so if you're confused why etsy is trading down today even though they beat big on expectations in their earnings report here is your answer the ceo knew that ahead of time now let's take a look at the options market and see which names are leading in terms of volume options volume today we have apple at number one and please look at the and put to call ratios the insanity the mania continues with buying calls significantly outweighing puts no interest for protection whatsoever the mentality and the psyche in the market of course is 
The sky's the limit. Up we go. There are no down days anymore. Of course, uh, as I told you yesterday, the risk here, and I bet a lot of these calls are bought expiring this week, meaning tomorrow. These guys don't even care what the jobs report going to look like tomorrow or any black swan event or any stimulus, negative news on the stimulus. They don't care. They are just buying. They're zombified. They're an auto pilot buying of stocks and calls. Apple leads the pack with 80% of the options traded today as calls. Likewise, with Facebook, number two with 76% calls. American Airlines comes at third with 83% calls. And Disney, of course, riding high, 77% or, so, or so of calls. And of course, AMD, about 70% now, here is the heat map, and as you can see, your eyes are already drawn to the big boxes that led the day. Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. But of course, specifically Facebook and Apple. Facebook is up over 5%, Apple also up over 3%. When these names move heavily, they will pull everything with them. Facebook, of course, rallying because of uh, the new Reel feature on Instagram that is supposed to be a competitor of TikTok. Of course, Amazon, uh, excuse me, Microsoft is still interested in TikTok. I don't know what they're thinking, but Facebook already crushed all the reasons, the rational reasons for them to buy TikTok. What about Disney? Disney continues to ride high, and we talked about Disney yesterday, and now the hedge fund manager Loeb, of course, very important manager, announcing that he is buying a stake in Disney, calling the streaming service as one of the most important revenue drivers ever. And of course, I said that yesterday, I said expect the streaming revenue to be the next revenue beast like you've never seen before. It all depends, of course, on the release and the success of the release of Mulan. Priced at 30 bucks, no popcorn included. You can watch it at the comfort of your home with your family. Now, if you don't like the 30 bucks price, you think it's too high, then you shouldn't buy Mulan and you should boycott it to send Disney a message to lower their prices. Because if we buy Mulan and we pay the 30 bucks, we are sending a message to Disney that 30 is the floor and we are willing to pay even more for future releases. In the interest of consumers, you should boycott buying Mulan so Disney would lower their prices. But of course, we know the zombified society that we live in. They will see the movie on Disney+. Plus. They will look at the screen. They will press a couple of buttons in the remote. They'll buy it. They'll watch it. And they'll check the bell a few weeks later and find out that they paid 30 bucks. Of course, Disney knew that ahead of time. And they are banking on the stupidity of human psychology. Another example of that, of course, I worked in the casino industry in Las Vegas for a very long time. And when casino bosses, the executives, decided to switch the blackjack payout from the regular three to two, they changed it to six to five, meaning that you will get paid less if you hit a blackjack, of course, defying the whole purpose of the game, the whole purpose of blackjack that you and the dealer have pretty much a 50-50 chance in terms of the odds. Changing the payout ratio for blackjack makes the odds favorable to the dealer, not to you. The casino workers, of course, complained and they said, hey, the players are not going to come to the table if you do that and you lower the payout ratio for blackjack. But the executives knew exactly what they were doing. Players continued to come to the table. And of course, they didn't realize that the payout ratio got lowered until they hit blackjack. But they still continued to show up and gamble their money away. So that became the general policy in Las Vegas. You hardly can find a table that pays 3 to 2 anymore. Had the players protested and said, nope, we're not going to tables that pay anything less than three to two, they would have reversed back to three to two. But again, it's a zombified society. They have no idea what they're doing. And of course, executives knew that and banked on it. Back to the heat map. Notice the disparity. We're not seeing momentum versus value or stayed home versus reopening. We don't have the tide that lifts all boats anymore. We have winners and losers in each sector of the market. Case in point, Apple are big, but look at the rest of the technology sector. Software was muted. Semiconductors were muted, trading in the red. 
Likewise, among the garbage stocks, of course, airlines and casinos outperformed today, yet cruises, banks, and retail underperformed. And another notable player here in the heat map, of course, you can see Toyota. Toyota rallied today, even though they reported their worst numbers in nine years in their earnings report. But the stock went down a lot, and of course, it was, quote-unquote, better than expected. Now, shifting to the headlines of the day. We have, of course, the most important headline today is the unemployment claims, the weekly unemployment claims came out at 1.186 million versus expectations of 1.423 million. And of course, the market rallied on uh, the number being better than expectations uh, again. This is a consistent theme of having over 1 million people applying for unemployment benefits weekly. There is nothing better than expected here. There is nothing and uh, no reason to celebrate. But the zombified action, the numbness in the stock market and the traders and the gamblers who invaded the stock market is apparent. We have another headline from Senator Sanders saying that he wants to tax billionaires and big businesses who profited during the pandemic, a.k.a. Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg and the rest of them. Please don't cry and tell me that is socialism and we are a free country, blah, 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 blah. Because I don't hear you crying when Congress and the Senate announces again that they want to bail out airlines in another round, keeping those zombie airlines companies alive. That is the epitome of corporate socialism taking from the poor and giving to the rich. Of course, we know the bad behavior of airline companies using 90% of their cash flow last year in shares buybacks. But hey, taking from the rich who benefited from the pandemic out of no self-effort whatsoever. It happened so that the government closed businesses due to understandable reasons of the pandemic and all commerce loaded to Amazon. It is unfair and he should be taxed. Those billions that he just cashed out by selling shares, they should be taxed and giving to the poor. And we have another vaccine headline here. Donald Trump, President of the United States, predicting that we will have a vaccine before the election. Of course, naturally. I guarantee you we will have a vaccine before the elections. Whether the vaccine works, or not, that is a different subject, but we will have a vaccine because he thinks that having a vaccine will get him reelected, so he will play dirty right now. Of course, he did not allocate all the billions of taxpayers' money to Moderna and Novavax and Kodak and the rest of them for free. He wants to pay back in return. So if the poll numbers continue to be abysmal, a phone call to Moderna CEO, hey, you owe me, get that vaccine out now. But the vaccine is not ready, sir. Who cares? Get it out now. And of course, later on, we'll find out the people who got the vaccine are getting sick. Not a guaranteed strategy for re-election, but it will be done anyways. And of course, the majority leader McConnell saying that in this round of the stimulus, the PPP provisions will be revised. Congratulations, you just woke up from your sleep. Because last time around, you guys passed the PPP loans program, no revisions whatsoever, and billionaires got to have some PPP loans while actual small businesses never got them. I mean, did you know that Tom Brady and Floyd, My and Floyd Mayweather got some PPP loans too? Just a couple of struggling athletes. Let's segue to the charts. Here is a daily chart of the SP. Why? A very, very important and significant day from a technical perspective. Let me take you back and revise what I was saying about the movement and the consolidation of the SPY around the resistance now support line. When we were trading below it and we couldn't break through it, we were just grinding slowly and slowly and just staying flat, I said that would trigger a frustration from stockholders and they will press the sell button and that will accelerate the selling activities. So the market better have a reason and a spark to get newcomers into the market to push us above the resistance line. And as we got above the resistance line, I asked the question, what will get us to break away from the resistance line and have 
the departure, the so-called departure where the market rallies significantly once it breaks above and beyond the resistance line. I outlaid these reasons. I asked the question, can the Fed get us above there? Well, the liquidity is already factored in, priced in. So that is a no-go. What about the vaccine? And of course, I said that the, we saw the vaccine headlines have an impact for a day or two and then they evaporate. So that is not going to get us above and beyond the resistance line. And then I talked about stimulus. I said stimulus is a question mark. It could and could not. And of course, I said earnings could be, but earnings came muted and negative. And I asked the question, what is the reason that will get us to break through and above and rally away from the resistance line? I could not find the reason. And I asked that question to you. And now we have the answer. The date is July 31. This is the date when we parted way with the resistance now support line and we rallied away from it. What happened in July 31st? The stock split that saved the market. That was the unknown. We needed one big stock split from Apple to rally us away from the resistance. That was a typical behavior back in October 9 of 19 when we struggled to break away from the resistance, now support line. And once we had the headline of the phase one trade deal, that was over. We said good luck. We said goodbye to the resistance, now support line, and we rallied away. This time around, it was the stock split that carried us above and beyond the line. And now, of course, the trap gets bigger as more traders feel safe. The warm, the water is very warm. And the people and the traders who are waiting in the sidelines are now hopping in. And you see the action right in front of you in the chart up day after day after day. This is what happened when the traders on the sideline hop in. The problem with these Johnny come lately is now they feel safe. The next destination because we defeated the gap. The, da the gap was the next destination of the next battlefield between the bulls and the bears. Right now, the bulls, the scoreboard two. And the bears, of course, zero. And now these new players are feeling safe and comfortable that all times high is the next destination and beyond. And now the trap door gets bigger and bigger. Those last traders, the Johnny come latelys, will be the victims when the trap door is shut. Because the bulls who already accumulated stakes way before, yes, they will have a little bit of a loss of profits, but they're still profitable. But the Johnny come latelys who hopped in. To the rally, after the, the resistance line, they will get slaughtered severely. Speaking of the stock split, let's talk about Apple. Because as Apple goes, so will the market. You know my stand. Apple resembles the final boss for bears to defeat. If Apple is defeated, the market will be defeated as well. Where is the limit? Where is the ceiling for the Apple slash stock split? rally and again of course i have to put this disclaimer because i've seen this numerous times in social media and other places the stock split does not mean if you buy one stock right now after the split you will get three for free it doesn't work that way okay i don't know how all these amateur traders got that idea if they stampede now and they buy shares in apple they will get triple their shares after the split doesn't work that way but here it is the limit of course you look at the weekly rsi indicators i identified the line of around 85 65 this is a historical resistance level from which apple reversed on the rsi indicator we are getting very very close right now we are about 80 above a little above 80 on the rsi when you do the weekly calculations, the RSI at the bottom was around 36.84 and Apple share price was around 212.67.61. And right now the RSI is about 80.61 and Apple shares trading at around 4.55. When you do the math, you can see that one point in the RSI is equivalent to about five points in Apple shares. So to reach the resistance line or the ceiling line of 85 on the RSI, we will have to rally about 20 to 25 points in Apple's share. And it could be a coincidence here that the valuation of Apple will hit 
two trillion bucks, around 477 bucks. And the RSI is telling you that Apple shares, the ceiling for Apple shares is around 477 bucks. It is an important psychological goal now to reach the two trillion bucks valuation. And that is the goal and the destination for now. Of course, there are any black swan events that could reverse the shares. But if we continue the same momentum and trajectory that we are going at in the market right now, in no time, Apple shares will trade at around 480 bucks. That would be the ceiling. Now, I want to talk about something different here. Look at the Triple Q's chart from a five minutes perspective. We have this battle between professional traders versus the amateurs. Historically speaking, when we have a lagging bailout package or any signature policy that are still being debated in Congress, the typical go-to action for market participants is to cause a mini crash, thus motivating politicians to finish up and pass the deal. We have seen mysterious many flushes and many and many sell-off attempts on Monday before the market closed and again on Tuesday and today we saw that earlier in the morning. However, the gambling crowd and the amateur traders continue to buy the dips on autopilot. They're zombified right now. They don't understand how the market works. Historically speaking, if you go back to 2008, when the bailout package was hanging in Congress around the end of September, traders caused a mini crash of about 800 points, which was significant back in the day because the Dow was much smaller. What do you know? A day later, they passed the bailout package and the TARP so-called TAR program. So you saw the attempts from traders, professional traders, trying to cause a mini crash. But hey, the amateurs continue to buy. the zombified. They're on autopilot buying any dip, any call. They'll buy anything. No matter what price and what valuation, they will click the button and buy. Now, let's segue to the earnings review. We had important earnings yesterday and today. Let's talk about two names that are not on the slide here that you're looking at. Etsy and Fastly both sold off after earnings. We talked about Etsy CEO dumping shares a few days ago. In the case of Etsy and Fastly, and we saw before Twilio, these are high flying names. Even if the earnings report come out stellar, it is very hard to live up to the valuation and what the stock is pricing. So you want to give it a couple of days, maybe a week or so to cool off. And then if you want to hop in, you should consider hopping in. But not right now because these names need to take a little air off the bubble. A lesson in earnings season, when you have a stock that is high flying up 100%, up more than 100% in certain cases, the expectations are so high, it's very hard to live up to, and you have a very good probability of the stock crashing and selling off after the report. We have another case, very interesting, a wild ride here in Carvana. Carvana reported after the bell yesterday, and it was down more than 9% after the bell. A lot of people who bought put options expiring this week were celebrating and popping the champagne already. That's why we say never buy naked put or call options during earnings week. It is stupid. And here is a case on point. We wake up in the morning and what do you know? Carvana shares rallied all the way to the tune of 30% after selling off to the tune of 9% in the aftermarket the day before. The earnings report was not special at all. It was actually bad. It was a slowing business. Nothing special here. A company that's severely overvalued. They're selling used cars. They're not selling biscuits in the middle of a pandemic and a recession. However, the short float in this name is over 30%. We talked yesterday about Wayfair. When you have the short load over 30 percent there's a huge risk of short covering here and what happened is the shorts who jumped the gun and shorted earlier and i mean months before and years before assuming that this company the concept will not work and it will go bankrupt now you have an affirmation that yes even in the middle of the worst recession that we have seen this company was bad. The earnings was bad. The earnings were bad. However, the company will survive just fine and will thrive 
after the recession is over. The concept works. The bear thesis is down the toilet. And now all of these shorts have to scramble and cover. And this is the result that you see right in front of you. Is the stock deserving to be trading at this level? Of course not. But the shorts will scramble and will continue to lift the shares up. You see that in Wayfair. You saw it before in Tesla. That is, of course, the risk and the stupidity of shorting too early. We have another name that reported yesterday, Roku, another high flying name, yet not shorted the same magnitude as Carvana is. Of course, the report was decent all in all, but they said that they are experiencing slowdown in ads and that picture will not improve in the quarters to come. That, that was enough to send the shares crashing to the tune of 7% today. Again, just like you've seen in Etsy, Fastly, Twilio, when you have a high-flying name, you run the risk of a sell-off after earnings regardless of how good the earnings are. Another name that reported today is Penn National Gaming. And of course, we were under the assumption that because of Las Vegas results, there were abysmal revenues down over 90% year over year, that domestic gambling, or shall we say regional gambling in the Midwest and other territories in the country will follow the same trend. Indeed, it did. However, the losses for Penn National Gaming were better than expected. And you saw the shares rally above 10% today. I opened an options trade earlier in the week. It is a put spread with the longer leg expiring in the week of August 21st and the shorter leg expiring this week. All in all, the entry price was 91 cents or 91 bucks. Now, the shares rallied well above the strike price of 33. The sell-off did not happen. The thesis goes down the toilet. So what do you do now? The shorter leg will expire worthless. The longer leg have about 30 cents in it. So it lost about two thirds of its value. Here is a lesson in options trading. The whole goal of options trading is to minimize risk and to hedge. Had you shorted the shares of Penn traditionally, you would have lost big today. And if you bought naked put options, you would have lost it all today. This is why we opened a spread, a put spread to minimize the entry price to 91 cents. Assume Penn or Penn National never sells off from this point on and closes the week of August 21st well above 33 bucks. That leg will expire worthless, but all in all, your risk was only 91 cents per option instead of the $3,000 plus that you would have risked had you shorted the shares traditionally. This is the whole point of options trading, hedging your risk, minimizing your entry price. No one knows how stocks will move in a given day or a given week or a given earnings report. Therefore, buying naked calls, naked puts is just plain stupid. Doing it via spreads and minimizing your risk is the smart way to go. Of course, the way I would manage this trade, I would not add to the longer leg to lower my entry price. I'd just leave it as is because it has two weeks to work. If we see a significant sell off in the market and Penn shares drop three or five percent, the time value alone on the options contract will put you above the line and the trade will become profitable. While we're at it, let's review the options trade we opened on Monday because we have expirations, of course, tomorrow. Here is the Disney trade, a case of the stock doing too good. We opened an option spread for the 120 call expiring this week and the longer leg expiring the week after. Now, you can close both of them if you have no interest in owning Disney shares. You can close both of them for very small profit or very small credit because you'll only be able to catch the time value from the longer leg. However, in my case, I am interested in buying Disney shares, 100 shares of Disney, at least a minimum. I believe in the story. I like the streaming story and what they did with Mulan and the release direct to the Disney Plus. And of course, a lot of fund managers agreed with me today. So I am hoping that Disney shares will sell off a little bit tomorrow so I can close the shorter leg because you have to close it. I will close it, pay whatever intrinsic value it has, close it, 
and I will let the longer leg ride all the way to expiration next week and I will exercise the option and own 100 shares of Disney at 120 bucks. We had another trade on Nikola, another call spread this time. I closed the entire contract before earnings because the option trade as is almost tripled. So I took my profits and I went home. However, if you kept the trade, the shorter 35 call is in the money right now by a little bit, by a buck or so. So you're going to have to close that tomorrow if Nikola shares close or appear to be closing above the 35 level strike. You will have to close that one and then let the longer leg ride for next week. The probabilities are, of course, the shorts in Nikola will have to cover at some point. They could start covering next week because Nikola is now trading at a reasonable level for now. Not in valuation perspective, but from a technical perspective. And of course, if Nikola rallies next week, you could make big bucks from this trade. Lastly, we had another trade, the bullish trade, the cold spread on Uber for the 33 strike. The shorter leg is expiring this week and the longer leg will expire two weeks from now. I see that Uber shares are trading lower by a little bit. This is exactly what you want because the shares, Uber shares rallied significantly the last few days along with the market. And now the price is above the strike price of the shorter call. Assuming that Uber closes the week below 33 bucks a share tomorrow that leg would expire worthless and now you will have the longer leg appreciating for two weeks to come this could be a very profitable trade what you don't want to see is you don't want to wake up in the morning and you see uber shares rallying a lot or dropping a lot you want it to stay flat to negative below the 33 strike price all right let's conclude this video we're going to look at the economic calendar we have the big kahuna the big jobs report we have seen the adp report below expectations well below expectations and today we have seen the weekly claims above expectations still bad but above expectations the expectations for this jobs report are all over the place there is no consensus so the market will do what it would do with it the algos would determine the destination this time around this is the risk the gamblers who bought the market today and bought calls expiring tomorrow did not factor in. The algos will do the job tomorrow. Not you, not me, not any human being. To give you a little teaser of what the jobs report will look like, we have a report from California that 57% of people who are unemployed are now applying again for a second time for unemployment benefits because they lost their jobs again. The state opened, they gained their jobs, and then the state reclosed and they lost their jobs. So they're reapplying for unemployment benefits. You bet that that will show up in the jobs report. Lastly, before we conclude, let's see the La La Land situation where we are right now in the market. Fracturing no risk whatsoever, stimulus will go perfect. The jobs report will be perfect. The trade deal with China or the tension with China will go out smoothly. There are no problems to see in the stock market destination whatsoever. Green skies all the way. This is what the gamblers and the maniacs who are buying the market right now are saying. But when you look at the pictures of the valuation and the risk that anything goes wrong here will have severe ramification. Look at the forward PE in the heat map, red means severely overvalued. Everything is overvalued right now. So there you go. You're looking at the Lala Land and the mania and the bubble right in front of you. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.